Good afternoon, everyone. I apologize. There might be a little slight delay. I was having a technical issue getting this to broadcast, um, but welcome. My name is Brittany Miller, and I'm a family support specialist with Raising Special Kids. There we go. Um, so sorry if you were signed on right at one. Um, quite honestly, I had a little tech issue, but I'm here and excited to talk to families. Today, um, my name is Brittany Miller. I am a family support specialist with Raising Special Kids. And I have the fun opportunity of hosting this Facebook Live series here with families, here for families. And today we are going to be talking about care for the caregiver. We're gonna go over some emotional um, tips and coping strategies for parents. And also talking about ways to talk about COVID-19 with our kids. And also some ways that raising special kids can provide emotional support. So again, for those joining on, um, I apologize for the slight delay, um, but I am here. My name is Brittany Miller and I'm a family support specialist with Raising Special Kids. And today's Facebook Live topic is care for the caregiver. So thank you for joining in. And if anyone is joining in now, if you wanna comment and let me know, I would really appreciate it so I can make sure our broadcast is working smoothly. Anyhow, so welcome. Um, let's see, we've been doing social distancing for several weeks now. And as I'm sure you can imagine, um, all of our families have had to adapt to big changes. And I have noticed in my own family that it is starting to take an emotional toll. It is hard to have our lives disrupted and it's difficult to not have our normal routines and you know, um, extracurricular activities and school and work and all of those um, things that we participated in that added balance and structure to our lives with all of that gone it can really affect us mentally and so i'm excited today to share some tips and resources that i've been setting up on this week in preparation for this live so again thank you courtney for um, checking in and saying hi um, i am very excited again my name is Brittany miller and i'm with raising special kids and i'm excited to get started talking about caregiving tips First of all, um, let's recap about what Raising Special Kids has been up to this week. So we've been busy helping families, business as usual, you know, families calling in and having questions about distance learning and, you know, their DDD services or AZIP or having someone to talk to, really any of the issues that we've always done, um, they just look a little differently. The things we've always addressed, um, we're still doing that as we support families. Um, our staff has been busy doing virtual trainings with great success. We've had um, some legal options classes that talk about guardianship and adulthood issues that you're going to be um, facing when your child turns 18 and things you should know about. Um, we're all, we've also done a few positive behavior support classes, and I will talk about it a little bit more, but we have some other great trainings in the works that are on our calendar that are very um, informative about what we're all going through right now. Um, I also want to say thank you on behalf of our organization. Um, we just wrapped up the Arizona tax credit campaign and it was very heartwarming and touching to see the donations coming in in support of raising special kids, especially right now during this trying time. Um, we know finances and um, all of that has affected families and our supporters and the businesses that um, support us have been affected differently. And so we're grateful for those that still chose to support raising special kids because as you know it directly impacts um, special needs families in our state and those parents needing help so thank you so um, to start things off i see people joining so i am going to be talking about caregiving tips for parents and ways we can cope during this time um, personally i admit um, i need these too so i am a mom I have three daughters and one of them has very um, is very medically fragile and has a lot of special needs. And I'll be honest, is, is not so having isn't having such a great week. So as I've been um, preparing some of this content to share with you guys, it's really helped me personally. So I'm thankful for that. So how do we as parents cope during a crisis? And I'm going to refer to my notes because some of these tips I've written down are just too good not to read verbatim. Um, what are some strategies and thought processes we can talk ourselves through to have more peace in our own minds, in turn helping our children? So first of all, um, I've used several resources to gather these tips and I've compiled them all. Um, let me just refer to, so the CDC, the Center for Disease Control has some great um, guidance. I've used some of their information. I've also referred to some resources from the Child Mind Institute which is wonderful, and some from our, from our local um, state agencies. 
So first of all, um, just I wanted to say um, we recognize that depression and mental health and anxiety it can look very different for many people. But if you were having a true mental health crisis and you need professional help, please call them. My um, advice and suggestions in no way um, replace any of that professional guidance. These are just tools and tips to help you. If you need help finding um, a counselor or psychiatrist for your child who might be struggling, call our office at 602-242-4366. We have a mental health provider list that has um, a ton of medical health professionals contact information. It tells what they specialize in and it'll give you a place to start. So I just wanted to uh, make sure I addressed that, that in some cases, professional help is needed and we hope that you will um, pursue that. And if you need help, let us know. So first of all, I thought this was a good tip. So validation, give yourself validation that this time is hard. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, experience anxiety, and it's normal for your families to feel it too. Validate your feelings and your children's feelings. So you might say to your child, I understand this is hard. I'm here for you if you need to talk. This time is confusing. So just allowing it to be known that yes, this is hard and none of us were trained for this. And there isn't a manual for parenting during this difficult time. And that's okay, we're all in this together. Um, the second tip I'd like to share is um, this, I liked this phrase, perfectionism and coronavirus do not mix. Give yourself a break. Parenting during a pandemic does not have to go smoothly every day. Take small steps and recognize the little wins. And I know we've talked about this over the last couple of um, Facebook Lives that um, we're all in this together, we're learning together, and no one's expecting parents to be perfect. Avoid burnout by setting realistic expectations for yourself. So that can be with your home, with your job, with your family, with the schedule. Yes, it's important to have a schedule and it'll help our children and us be more at peace and be able to function better. But if it doesn't go that way, it's okay. This is an unprecedented time for all of us. Practice forgiveness and self-compassion. You know, give yourself a pat on the back. This is a really tough time. And I'm sure when we um, entered parenthood, we didn't really plan on um, this being one of the things we'd have to navigate. So giving ourselves a break and, you know, letting us feel um, that we're doing a good job. Um, dealing with our own anxiety can be a powerful way actually to help our children cope. So as a um, individual who personally suffers with anxiety at times, um, I have recognized when I'm stressed, it can wear off on my kids and on their behavior. And we've been hearing from families a lot lately that their kids are struggling with behaviors and it's, it's probably pretty normal. Um, right now it's difficult, routines are disrupted and it's affecting our children. And so if we can take a deep breath, model that calm, even if inside we're feeling overwhelmed, it will definitely um, provide peace to our children and be a good example for them to follow. I've mentioned it before, um, but relying on routine, do our best. Obviously, we know that schedules are not how they used to be, but if we have some somewhat of a schedule, you know, setting normal bedtimes, getting everyone up at a decent hour of the day. Um, for me personally, not letting my teenagers stay up till 11 every night and sleeping in all morning because you don't feel like yourself. You're not at your best. And that goes for us parents too. Um, one thing I've loved about having this time of social distancing is we're eating family dinners more. Um, we're eating together um, at the table and talking with my kids. And I'm sure the rest of you um, can agree that there's been a lot more family time. And so if we can look for some of those positives, it'll help us during this time. And if anybody has any um, tips or things they've been doing at home that's been working or self-care or anything related to you know, this topic today, feel free to post it in the comments and I will um, glance over and share some of them throughout this live. Um, okay, be smart about what you're reading. This is really important. So as you know, the world of social media is wonderful. We're on it right now and we're able to connect with each other and um, find resources, find ideas. Um, find a community. There are so many benefits to social media and a part of my job is is doing social media. So I believe in it and I feel like it's an important. However, if you spend all of your time constantly looking at every COVID-19 update or seeing all the celebrities that are announcing they have COVID or hearing the doom and gloom that sometimes can be flooding our news feeds right now, that's going to affect your mental health. So make sure you take a break. Make sure you're not always looking at that. And when you're looking for information, make sure you are going to a reliable source. 
And the good news is Raising Special Kids, we do have a great website where we have been actively posting updated information about COVID-19 and resources. So if you want to know things that are current, um, please visit our website and I'll post it in the comments when this is over. And that way you can have um, access to the information you need, but it's not going to be in your face all day because some of us do, many of us need that social media break. Um, find a few moments for yourself each day. Now, I know this is hard. Um, as parents, I, I've been thinking about this and, you know, as parents, we used to have those natural transition times where it was driving to work and I loved my telecommute to work. Um, not only do I love my job and being with my coworkers, but I would have, you know, 30 minutes of time for me. So I would listen to podcasts or the radio or something that I wanted to listen to. And that would be a time of transition where I had alone time or, you know, after, you know, moms with children at home, um, you know, they dropping, dropping them off at school and having that 10 minutes in the car to yourself. Or for us that have children with disabilities who are receiving state services, you know, when a therapist comes to work with your child and you have those moments to maybe step away and get a chore done, or honestly take a moment to breathe because you know your kid is having a great time working with their speech therapist and mom or dad, you know, we needed a moment to ourselves because we've had a long day. So a lot of those um, natural transitions are not happening, happening right now with COVID-19. And so we've got to get creative. Um, I had a coworker this morning share with us that her shower was her favorite part of her day, you know, just taking a hot shower and having those few moments. Uh, me personally, um, every afternoon, instead of taking a lunch break, I've been walking the trail around my neighborhood and it's really helped my head, you know, clear my head and get some vitamin D. Um, we know um, it's hard. It's hard to find personal time right now because everyone needs you, but it's really important. You know, like that analogy, um, you have to put on your oxygen mask first so you can help your children and those around you. It is really important. And as a parent raising a child with a disability, which I know many of you um, fit that criteria, sometimes when you hear, you know, you need to take self-care, it's almost laughable. And I have felt that way before because our lives are so busy and the demands on us are so strong and it's hard to take those moments to take care of ourselves. And maybe that looks a little different, but if we can do that in some small way, it'll help us cope, especially right now during this pandemic. Um, one other tip that I wanted to share, oh, two other tips. Um, obviously eating healthy, getting a little exercise, drinking enough water, those are all important. If our bodies feel good, then it'll affect our mind. Um, there's nothing wrong with eating ice cream after a long day, but make sure that's not something you do every day and make sure to get um, those fruits and vegetables in. And that's nutritional guidelines we know are important, but it's especially important right now when we're under such extreme stress. And lastly, something this will lead us into our next topic um, is check on our kids. So, you know, our children are hearing us express uh, what's going on. They may hear us talking to our spouse or communicating with someone on the phone or talking on social media, whatever it may be, they may, they're hearing us vent. They are. Kids listen. My kids, I think they're not listening to me, but they are. Our kids are listening. And so we need to make sure that we are checking in on their feelings and making sure that they're okay. Um, this leads us in to, you know, a good transition for what I wanted to talk to next about this live is how do we talk to our kids about COVID-19? There's no rule book and obviously it depends on your family situation, the age of your children, where they're at developmentally, all of those factors come into play when we're deciding how we should communicate with our kids about what's going on and what information to share. But um, the CDC and Child Mind, they together had some good ideas on ways to do that. So I wanted to share them with you. So we've talked about it a little bit already, but first of all, make them feel safe. You know, yes, the world is in crisis, but right now in your home, we're safe, we're healthy, we're going to take care of you. So just give them that peace and reassurance. Um, model calm, I've already talked about that. So even if you're not feeling calm, which I can relate to that, there have been moments where I've been stressed over the past few weeks. Taking a deep breath and modeling that um, calm demeanor will help ease our, ease our children's anxiety. Give them facts that lead to discussion. And um, this was a good one. Make sure they're age appropriate, certainly. Age appropriate, certainly but too much information can cause anxiety. So especially, you know, I have teenagers, so, you know, they can hold a pretty in-depth conversation with me. And honestly, they look up, you know, Google things online even more than I do and often know about what's going on in the world more than their mom. But um, make sure we're not giving them too much information. You know, answer their questions honestly, never lie. 
but we don't want to bear, we don't want to give them the burden of too much information about, you know, the statistics of COVID or how many cases are in our county or all of those things, because that may cause unwanted anxiety. So just make sure to keep that in mind. And thank you for everyone saying hello. Um, and thank you for my colleague, Neil. He posted the um, link to the Raising Special Kids resource page for COVID-19. All of you listening, please go check it out. It's really good. And we're updating it daily. Um, hi, Selena. I'm happy to see that you're joining us. It's really fun to see families that we've supported participating in this broadcast. So thank you. Um, back to um, helping our kids. So giving them power and responsibility. So I, I liked this analogy. So um, for younger ones, you know, washing our hands and using hand sanitizer is like kryptonite. You know, superheroes by doing our part in social distancing and distancing and protecting our family and our neighbors. I thought that was a cute analogy, um, but something that a, you know a younger child would relate to. Um, a neighbor of mine, we were talking on the phone, and she had expressed to me that, you know, she said that COVID nineteen are like tiny germs, which they are. And um, when it gets inside our bodies, it can make us very ill. And if we sneeze or touch other people, sometimes they can spread. So by being home, we're protecting our friends and neighbors. And this won't last forever, but that's what we're doing right now. And I really liked that approach, um, especially for our little ones. Uh, let them know what to expect. Um, you know, we, we don't know everything. We don't know when um, our governor or, or, and our president are gonna open things back up. Um, we know school's out for the rest of the year. We don't know what summer is going to bring. We don't know what the fall is going to bring, but we can share what we do know and we can let them know that whatever happens will be there for them. It's okay to share true statements that are tough. You know, I know we won't be seeing our friends every day, but this is what we need to do right now to protect each other. You know, we may not be able to go to the movies or go out to eat like we used to do. And I'm really sorry you're not able to do the extracurriculars or plan your sports team. And I know that it's affecting you. But this is what we can expect right now. And this is what we're going to do um, to have some happiness and joy in our home. Um, having empathy, you know, this is stressful on us and it's very stressful on our kids. Um, having the connection with our classmates at school is huge. And when that's taken away, especially for our teenagers, it can be really hard and it can, can cause anxiety and depression. So watch out for our kids and let them know you're sorry that they're having to go through this and that you can empathize with them. Um, give them a little grace. Yes, they have a lot of assignments and distance learning is um, in full force. And I'm, I'm pleased to say my kids have adopted, but if they have a bad day and it's not going well, you know, give them a break, just like you would give yourself a break. Um, they weren't trained for this. They didn't know the rest of their school year was going to be in a social distancing, self-quarantine environment. Um, trying to maintain a normal routine. Um, we've already talked about this, but have a schedule and try to mostly stick to it. It'll help them feel calm in this time of fear. Model the behavior you want to see. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We, It's normal to have anxiety and fear and be stressed and have time, not have any time to practice self-care or have a hard time coping. But for our kids, we need to be that strong friend. And even if we're faking it till we make it, it's important to do that. Um, this was a, lastly, I'm just going to share this suggestion. Um, they said to loosen up a little bit on screen time. Now, this is personal and every parent does what, you know, parents how they want um, and they have every right to. But sometimes um, letting our kids have a little extra, you know, whether it be screen time or social media time so they can communicate with their friends or have a, you know, release or a break from what they're doing, um, they're going to be okay. My kids have definitely had more screen time than I would normally allow them to. But if it's helping us get through the day and mom being able to work and then being able to have that um, mental release, um, they'll be okay in the long run. So I did wanna read um, something a little more serious just for us to be aware. So the CDC has given um, some good tips for us as parents to watch out for. I shouldn't say tips, good um, warning signs for us to watch out for as parents for our kids who might be really struggling. And at that, at this, at these points, it would be wise if you feel you needed to get some professional guidance. But kids don't always express themselves. They don't always have the, um, some of our children are nonverbal. Um, some of our kids don't have the expressive language skills to really tell mom and dad how they're doing. So these are some behaviors that may indicate that they're struggling right now. Excessive crying or irritation in younger children. Returning to behaviors they have outgrown, such as, you know, toileting accidents or bedwetting, um, excessive worry or sadness, unhealthy eating or sleeping habits, 
irritability and acting out um, behavior in teens. You know, those can be um, behaviors that poor school performance or avoiding doing their school. If that's not typical for your child and they're starting to struggle, it's probably pretty indicative that they're having a hard time and they need you. Um, difficulty with concentration and attention. Um, avoidance of activities they used to enjoy. So just not, you know, just not being happy with life, not wanting to engage. Um, and some physical symptoms like um, heart, having a hard time sleeping or sleeping too much. Explained, unexplained headaches or body aches. And ser more seriously, you know, substance abuse. Those are warning signs. And those are things that as parents, um, we would want to get professional help for. Um, for the behaviors, uh, raising special kids, we do have a positive behavior support class that um, we are doing ongoing. And if you check our Facebook and our website, we are constantly adding more and more classes. And the good news is because they're virtual, they're easier for families to connect to right now. And you can get some great tips on how to practice um, positive behavior techniques at home and help your children um, discontinue the unwanted behaviors and just give you some tips as a parent on how to handle those. It's really effective. And if you need individual behavior support, you wanna to talk to someone at our office who can give you some unique advice for your family situation, definitely call us. We have family support specialists who have great experience in this area. Um, our office number is 602-242-4366, and we'll be happy to help you with that. So moving forward, this is actually um, my favorite part of today is I wanna share how raising special kids is providing emotional support for families through our parent leader program. So if anybody watching has been um, helped by a parent leader, if you wanna comment on our thread, that would be wonderful. Um, it is definitely one of the hallmark programs of our organization. So we've been around 40 years and counting and parent to parent connections are very valuable and have been one of the most popular and meaningful parts of the services we offer at raising special kids. So veteran parents who have you know been been through it um, have a child with a certain diagnosis and are seasoned and feel a little more a little more comfortable with where they're at in life. Often they will um, get trained by us and volunteer as a parent leader, you know, a parent mentor for new parents or parents going through a new transition in their child's life. And the good news is, is um, a lot of these parents that decide to become parent leaders with us are families that we have helped. And then they wanna give back and they wanna provide that meaningful emotional support. You know, um, I personally have had a parent to parent connection long ago. My daughter Brooke is almost 11 now. But um, in the beginning, you know, it was really overwhelming getting my daughter's diagnosis and she has a rare one. And so, you know, there's only a handful of kids in Arizona that had it and social media wasn't huge back then. So I didn't know how to find a support group. And I went to a um, parent group through the Foundation for Blind Children because um, vision impairment is part of her disability and raising special kids happened to be presenting there. And so they planted a seed. They got me excited about this organization. And um, I admittedly didn't call right away. I was still in the throes of being overwhelmed with this new diagnosis and my daughter has severe epilepsy. So we were really struggling and I wasn't quite ready for that connection. But as time went on, I never forgot how I felt when I heard that presenter and I knew I needed to call Raising Special Kids. And I did. And I had a family support specialist help me. I had a parent mentor help me, a parent leader who talked me through, who let me cry on the phone a little, who was there for that emotional support. Because there's nothing like talking to someone who really gets what you're going through. And obviously that led to me volunteering as a parent leader. And now I'm an employee with Raising Special Kids. So it is a valuable, wonderful program. If you would like to talk to someone who has a similar diagnosis to your child, or maybe even is in a similar spot in life as you. You know, sometimes we have connections, um, we set up parent leader connections with a parent who maybe their child is turning 18 and they're going through guardianship and they've done our training, but they're overwhelmed and they are trying to figure out how it works with SSI and um, navigating voc rehab. And, you know, we've given them the tools and the information, but they just want to talk to a parent who has done this with their own child and get that perspective. We can set up a match. Um, there's countless reasons we can set up a match, but if you would like to have that support, please call us. We are happy to um, reach out to our parent leader team that does those connections. Um, they will ask you some questions about your family and your dynamic and what kind of support you're looking for, and then they will facilitate a match. 
it is um, it's about an eight week program. Most of it honestly is over the phone, you know, phone calls or text messages, whatever you're comfortable with. But you have the opportunity to to talk with a parent leader from raising special kids who truly wants to help you and is there for you and really can understand what you're going through. Recently, we had, you know, we get good feedback from our families on the Parent Leader Program all the time. And I did want to read a quote that was shared because it touched my heart and it was wonderful. So um, this parent had been helped by one of our parent leader, leaders recently, and she said about her, she was the most awesome person I've ever encountered in my early journey of being a special needs mom. She was placed in my life at the right moment when I was feeling alone. She makes me smile, laugh, and we have even cried together. She helps me know and understand that I'm not alone. This is my favorite part. I am now excited for my son more than I am afraid for him. She reaches out. She reached out at the right time with a text here and there and talks to me whenever I called her. And that that's amazing, you know, to have that support. I, I know how it feels um, to be overwhelmed and alone. And I know many of you do. So if you want a parent connection, please call us. We are happy to make that match. And we have many parent leaders who are excited to talk with you, especially right now, given COVID-19, there's a lot of stress and we have a lot of parent leaders who want to help families and be there to support you. So I hope that you'll, you'll call us and take advantage of that program. Okay, so we are starting to get towards the end of our time together. And I just wanted to thank you for participating. You know, I can give you self-care tips and we can share you know, coping tips with you, but um, really you guys are in the trenches. We are too, and we're just learning all of this together. Um, we are adapting, Raising Special Kids is adapting some of our programs right now, so we can provide that much needed support to parents. Um, if you have an idea or information you wanna learn about in one of our upcoming trainings that we're creating and are in the works, feel free to comment on this thread, um, message us on Facebook, let us know because we really care about what's currently going on for our families and wanna provide information that truly will help you. Um, I'm excited to share that we have some new trainings coming out, um, special education during COVID-19 online. That has been in the works for the past few weeks. I mentioned it in our last few Facebook Lives that our uh, education stat team has been working directly with our own Arizona Department of Education. And um, they have been um, wonderful at listening to our feedback, taking parent feedback, and then adapting to the fluid situation that's going on right now. With that guidance, our family um, st our education stat team has created a um, special education virtual training. It is posted to our Facebook page. The first one is, I believe, Saturday the 25th, but stay on the lookout. They are gonna talk about how your child's individualized educational program looks right now, what's changed, and how to help you with that. So please stay tuned. We also have a new training come out, healthcare systems during COVID-19. So, um, you know, going to the doctor, teleservices, telehealth, um, our Department of Developmental Disabilities, um, Arizona Early Intervention, we're going to talk about what those programs are looking like right now and how you can access them and how your family can still be supported. Um, they are all open for business. You know, um, develop, um, DDD is still um, talking with families. They're having um, phone sessions and Zoom meetings and they're adapting to what's going on right now. Arizona Early Intervention, they're, they're still accepting referrals. So if you have a child under the age of three and you suspect they have a developmental disability, you can still call and refer them. It's a really simple process. Um, the central referral line is 602-635-9799 and the AZIP team will help you refer your child. So support and help hasn't stopped. We're just all adapting together in this current climate. So to wrap things up, I just want to send a special thank you from all of us at Raising Special Kids. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve you together during this time to adapt and to learn to the um, changing needs our families have and we recognize that special needs parents or children or parents with children who have special health care needs they already are are under a lot of stress and then add in a national world or a world crisis it can be very difficult but we are here and we want to help you so i hope you all have a wonderful weekend again please call us i'm going to leave our phone number last one more time, it's 602-242-4366. My name is Brittany Miller and I'm a family support specialist with Raising Special Kids and I've had a great time 
I'm hosting this Facebook Live here with families, here for families. So I'm going to sign off. Please stay tuned. Next week, we are doing our telehealth Facebook Live, um, all things telehealth, and it will be really great. So I hope to hear from you. Take care, everyone. Be safe and be well.